Okay. So if you're watching this video, uh, whoops, you missed the first little bit. Uh, if you have questions about Van der Waal or hydrogen uh, bonding, specifically that intermolecular forces, uh, feel free to ask those questions. I'll be more than happy to go over it with anyone that's having trouble with it. Uh, sorry, I forgot to start recording. Okay, let's take a look at water as an example uh, for these intermolecular forces because it's going to be one that we kind of consistently need to talk about. It's going to be the star of lesson three, so to speak, because at the end of the day, uh, the hydrogen bonding between water molecules, it, it allows for its unique properties. And water is quite unique in the way that it can behave because it's allowed uh, to make both strong and weak interactions and attractions with different molecules and different atoms. So it's, it's quite unique in the way that it behaves. So water can cling. Uh, this is due to cohesion and adhesion as a result of that, uh, those van der Waal forces. So water can stick to things, which seems kind of counterintuitive to think about uh, when you think about water sticking to something, but it can stick to things. If you, if you take note, when water hits the side of a wall even, it takes a long time for it to go down that wall or if it's on, you know that when you're driving in your car, when you're, your parents are driving in your car, if you take the bus and it's raining and the water starts to streak against the, the side windows, it, it takes a lot of force for water to move along something because it clings and likes to stick to different surfaces. And it's as a result of those van der Waal forces that it can do that. Water can also absorb and retain an absolute huge amount of thermal energy. Uh, it has what's called that heat sink ability due to a high specific heat capacity and that high specific heat of vaporization. So water can store an absolute metric ton of heat. The oceans of our planet are so, 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 even the lakes of our planet are so good at storing that energy for a long period of time. And it slowly releases that heat as we need to. It's a huge component as to why we have uh, some of the diversity of life on our planet because that water retained a lot of that heat. So in some of the colder places on our planet, it retains heat so well that it can in fact release some of that heat to allow for life to kind of thrive and utilize that heat. Uh, so it's super good at absorbing and retaining thermal energy. And then lastly, uh, solid water is less dense than liquid water. It's one of the few exceptions to the world of where something goes from uh, solid to liquid and it becomes uh, less or more dense, sorry. So that idea that ice can float in water, which allows for icebergs, that, that adds to that extremely, extremely important, huge property of water being very, very special yeah, in, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. So when we look at some biochemical reactions, uh, we're going to talk a lot about these uh, reactions. I'm going to spend the majority of the rest of this lesson kind of talking about why it's so important that we understand how um, these intermolecular forces work because these biochemical reactions kind of form the underpinning understanding of everything we're gonna look at uh, throughout this course with regards to the cellular components. So the first thing I wanna talk about is dehydration. That dehydration removes water. It removes water from something. So it can be a hydrogen and uh, an oxygen and a hydrogen from one atom or one molecule. It could be a hydrogen from one atom or one molecule. And then they remove that to join monomers to form polymers. So that removal, that dehydration or condensation, that removal of water will allow for the joining of molecules together. And that will, to, uh, in an attempt to form uh, polymers from monomers. That's gonna be a very important thing as we start to look at the metabolic processes of the body, uh, because we're gonna look at how sugars get broken down and created using water. Likewise, hydrolysis is gonna be the addition, the addition of water. So we're gonna add water into things in an attempt to separate polymers into smaller units. So again, just like with the dehydration or condensation reaction, hydrolysis is gonna add water to break a long chain of something like a starch or like a sugar, for example. It's gonna use water to break that apart into smaller constituent pieces for the body to use. A redox reaction is going to always, always occur together. This is the first thing I want to talk about with, with regards to redox reactions. And I know I have a lot of stuff blurred out right now, but I'll, I'll get to it all. The key thing here that I really want to focus on is that they're always going to occur together. They never happen separately. Uh, or they, Sorry, I shouldn't say They very rarely happen separately. But for the sake of our understanding in this class, they're always going to happen together. OK, so that redox reaction. So what is a redox reaction? Well, it's a reduction or a gain of electrons. In this case, oxygen is the oxidizing 
agent. And an oxidizing or oxidation is a lack or a loss of electrons. So CH4 is the reducing agent. So in this case here, we have two things working together in an attempt for one to gain electrons and one to lose electrons. So let's take a look at the specific reaction uh, as a whole that I alluded to here. So we have the oxidation process, the oxidation process of, in this case, we're looking at methane and oxygen gas in complete combustion. So that methane is gonna be oxidized. And again, recall, oxidized means that it's gonna lose electrons, okay, the loss of electrons. And it's gonna gain that oxygen, lose electrons, and it's gonna become something completely different. Likewise, that oxygen, that oxygen is gonna form that reduction component, that reduction component that allows for the formation of H2O, but again, recall, when we look at that reduction, it's a gain of electron, okay? So this is a lot to kind of take in with regards to this. I wanna give you all a little bit of time to, to look over that uh, Fundamental Chemistry of Life quiz that I gave to you again. Um, and if you have some questions, I'm gonna stop my recording here. I'm gonna give you all maybe like 10, 15-ish minutes to kind of digest everything, and then I can start up the next lesson afterwards. And hopefully remember to record this time.